Hi guys, this is Maria from Nerd News and I'm really excited because today we're going to do our first ever um, tutorial. We're going to do some face paint and today we're going to start off by doing a tiger. Um, hopefully this will be an ongoing series, something that I can kind of teach you guys, hopefully something um, in the realm of cosplay especially. So today what you'll need is just some brushes. I got cheap um, brushes. Anything really will do. You can even buy arts and craft um, brushes. Whatever um, works well for you. You're going to have to play around a bit. Sponges or a sponge, some water, and of course some face paint. And today I'm going to be using um, just a basic palette. Um, this one in particular is Manron, uh, the Paradise um, Basic Palette. So, um, and it's a water-based face paint. Um, I like it the best because it dries pretty quick and is it, it leaves a nice finish on your face. Um, a lot of the makeup that you get in Halloween stores um, is a grease paint which never really dries and um, gives you a different look. Not something I really recommend, but for this, uh, the water-based um, works well. Now, if you're gonna be out in the heat and sweating or around water a lot, obviously this might not be the best option. So just keep that in mind when you are um, doing your special effects. So, what I'm gonna start with is just a basic foundation brush and a little bit of water. And we're gonna start with just plain white. So you put a little bit on your brush and then mix up the makeup really good. Now, as you can see, I still have makeup on my face from the day. I didn't prime my face, I didn't take my makeup off. This is strictly just a quick um, how-to uh, for you. I apologize for this, but you'll see how well the makeup covers and um, what it's capable of. So I am going to start just covering certain parts of my face white where it would be on the uh, tiger. So right by his face. Now if you think it's like too translucent, you can always go back um, and pick up more paint. Then this does not have to be perfect because if you look at tigers, all of their faces are a little bit different in certain spots. And I didn't glue or wax my eyebrows down. I would normally kind of do that just so they're not sticking up everywhere. As you can see, even with my makeup on, you do get really good coverage, which is nice. Okay, once you have your white spots on, what you'll want to do is move on to just cover the rest of the face orange. Um, and then we'll go back with the sponge and kind of blend them together. And then we'll focus on the black spots. So I'm just going to clean off my foundation brush and then dip it in this orange. Okay, now that you've got your face with your basic colors and your basic shapes, um, what you want to do if you're not happy or if you see any spots that are um, not covered as well as you'd like, you can always let it dry, kind of go back over it um, to get it to the consistency you want. And I'm just letting my face dry really quick so that I can go through and maybe touch up some of those spots that might be um, uneven. So um, the next step 
um, is starting to do the nose area and some of the black markings that the cat has. So what I like to do is I like to use just a smaller, stiffer brush for those types of things. Um, I think this is actually an e.l.f. like concealer brush. Um, really small, stiff type of brush. Um, I use it around the eyes too. Um, if not, you can always, like I'll even use part of my uh, eyeliner that's already on my eyes just to save time. But um, you can also use the face paint just as well. So it's kind of just a personal choice if you'd rather use your eyeliner or you know how you can get the the um the line and the perfection that you want with maybe like a felt tip it will go over um the paint pretty easy so what i'm going to start to do is just kind of black out the bottom of my nose and since the bottom of my nose is like super pointy i have to like shove it up my nose too so i apologize if you see up my nose but I hate when you can see your nostril, it drives me nuts. Um, because it kind of ruins the effect. So, just make sure when you wash it, get in there. Get at it. Okay. And then I'm going to real carefully just go down my lip. And I really start thin on the, toward the inside of the lip. I don't try to draw too much of the heart. Um, but it's just kind of a personal choice. You can start going thicker. And what you're going to do is define the little cheeks of your tiger. Okay, I want you to notice you can also put a little pink there if you'd like. It's really kind of a preference. I do just black for the nose because it tends to just kind of be easier. Um, and then uh, what I like to do for like the whiskers or the whisker effects is just kind of put dots from the outside in but not all the way. So try not to put too much water on it or you're not going to get that fine detail that you might want and you're just kind of going to go thick to thin. You can start off small and then kind of go and again they don't have to be perfect. Now the eyes and the stripes. Um, these kind of differ I mean, you can kind of, this pretty forgiving on a tiger, which is very good if you're first starting out. Um, what I really like to do is focus on the eyes first, just because that's kind of what you see. You see these like um, really intense eyes. So um, what I like to do is it's really thick down toward the bottom. Right, and it has that white contrast underneath. If you want to black out your waterline at the very end, you can. Um, you know, it's just on all, on how far you want to take it. And there's usually just a lot going on right here in the corner of your eye. So I just take whatever and I kind of mix it into the yellow because it's going to look like fur that way. And when you come out here, you're going to come out really far. Okay. And then you're going to do the other eye. Okay. See this like big hunk of black on my eye? Don't panic. Um, you still have a lot of stripes and it, it might be like the perfect shape. So, um... I'm not even worried about that right now. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take this, the, um, the edges of the eyes and we're going to start making the shape, so the, the stripes on your face. Now everybody's um, face shape is different, so you can make your um, stripes the way that you would like, but most of the time the eye stripes kind of connect to the, 
the longer stripes on the face of the tiger. So, and these can kind of go anyway, but I like to follow like the curve of my face. And I just tap the brush too right toward the end. So you still get that kind of fur type of feel to your stripes too. I mean, you can always use the brush when it's wet or the sponge, not the brush, to kind of tap it. Be careful not to smudge, like press. You'll make a muddy mess. Now, the lion's forehead has a lot of lines that kind of come together. If you see my widow's peak, that's kind of what I'm using as a gauge for the center of the head. And I, and I always have like something to look at as a guide just to kind of keep my proportion ready and straight. So I usually just go down the middle and start making the stripes out and curving toward my, you know, around my face. Okay. Now, um, there is some space here. If I wanted to kind of just extend some of these out, I can do that also. So that kind of looks uniform. Um, we'll go ahead and do the, this other side and we're going to kind of talk about how you can kind of define the nose a little bit more. Now there are some in the white spaces. Don't forget about those. Um, again, you're just going to kind of go through. Usually they're up and down like vertical with your uh, eye and they're almost kind of usually like a teared up shape or are coming across from the um, forehead. Okay, now um, they have a thick, broad nose. So what I like to do is just take, clean this off really well, or take a whole new brush, or even your sponge. It really depends. Just a tiny, tiny bit of um, brown, and you can kind of just stipple it on there, and then kind of patch your brush or even use your finger and just kind of blend it in where your nose goes up. And it's going to kind of give you that shadowed effect. Now, is this necessary? Probably not. But it may add to um, yours. Do you need all the stripes? No, it's kind of just a personal choice depending on, you know, what kind of tiger you, you're going to be or what you are. And I'm just going over this with a little bit of water to kind of... make it broad. You can do a little bit under the eyes too. Um, like again, this is just a personal choice. I kind of like with just like the bold and boldness of the black. So, what I'll do is I'll kind of, feels like there's a few missing through here on my cheeks. And then I'm going to do the hair on the chin just to kind of make it, I tried to do a little bit on the edges. The edges I tried to get as blurry as possible and I just pull it away from my face to kind of get that effect. So, we'll add a few more here and there. Okay, now for like the chin area. What I like to do is I'll darken in my bottom lip and you can choose. Usually I don't try to do as much with my bottom lip. I don't want to look pouty. Again, a lot of this is just kind of taste, personal taste. And then I'm just again I'm gonna try to get a little diluted and just pull like this some color because I want to have like that fuzzy kind of look to me and then down on the chin you're just gonna gently pull out there 
again, a lot of this is just kind of finding um, your technique that works best for you. But really quick, this is my tiger face. Um, you might be seeing it, hint, hint, at a Comic-Con. Maybe uh, as a character you might not expect. So I hope you liked it. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Um, and if you want more, let me know. Um, I hope to do some more. I'm more blood and guts uh, kind of a person. I have that preference. But if there's something that you would really like to see or you want um, done, just make sure that you let us know. Comment, like. Um, and until next time, I will see you soon.